my complaint about notebooks is not that they have states. Uh, it's very hard to program without maintaining state of one form or another. It's that they have hidden states. So the state is not particularly easy to inspect and it's easy to get it wrong. And, and in particular, what I mean is, uh, you know, in my talk, I gave some pretty pathological examples, but where if you look at the code that's contained in the notebook, that's not the code that necessarily ran to put variables into the kernel, right? And so I may have, you know, a cell that says X equals one, but maybe before I put that there, uh, I said X equals 10 and I never ran the X equals one cell. So, uh, so, so it's more this notion of, it's not so much that there's state, it's that I find the, the state difficult to reason about. Okay, so at any and time- I think that's the challenge. Like at any time I can interrogate Say if I have an instance of a class, I can interrogate the values of all the different components or, or look at all the functions. I can't necessarily do the same in the same way in the notebook or there are, I guess, they're red herrings, straight up red herrings that can show up. Yeah, yeah. Because like you can you could just change the, the what's in a cell without running it. And so if you inspect it quickly, I guess, like you don't see what the state actually is. The, but the, the other thing I would say is that uh, when you see me doing all this object-oriented programming, that's really me being in build a library mode, not explore some data, write a script mode, right? So the idea is not that I'm going to define these classes, instantiate a bunch of objects into memory and then start working with them at the REPL. It's that I'm going to define all these classes and then having built out something that looks like a library, now I'm going to go elsewhere and write a script that instantiates them in a specific way, uses them and saves results. Yeah, yeah, and then that actually, yeah, that I guess that's a completely different mode um, of, of thinking. And so, one question that I have, like looking at, at just the the clean, I was overcome by the beauty of your code when I was watching it. Um, what are some of the the most obvious problems that you see data scientists or mistakes rather that you see data scientists make when they're let's say they're competent at the the data science part of data science, but they're lacking in the software engineering part? What are some of the most common software engineering mistakes that you've caught people making? That's a that's an interesting question. So. I have pretty strong and idiosyncratic preferences. Uh, so one, and so these are not gonna be mistakes, they're gonna be things I don't like. Mm -hmm. um, so one is bad variable names. I really dislike it when people use bad variable names. So if you're talking about you know, the width of something, I, I want that variable called width, not you know, WTH or WDT or, or whatever. Like characters, characters are cheap and you know, most people have some fancy two hundred dollar keyboard, so you might as well use that. And, and this isn't this isn't a preference I would have expected from a guy who started out in math, to be honest. That, that's an that's an interesting point. Um, I mean, it makes, I was, sense. it makes sense. I started out in physics, and I agree with you. But it's just like it's it's interesting. I like in math, characters are expensive because you have to move your hand. Yeah, it's also the case that you know a lot of times what you're doing in math is much more abstract, right? So I'm talking about like a group of objects. And so I might want to call the elements G or H or X or Y or whatever, because I don't know anything about them. This group could be mm -hmm. a group of anything, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so similarly in programming, the more generic, if you were to look at, say, Haskell, where someone is writing a function that maps over a list, uh, they will probably call those variables X and Xs because that list could be a list of absolutely anything. Um, and so there's a sense in which the variables are called that because you don't really know anything more about them other than that. You know, they're an element of a group, or this is something, an element of some arbitrary vector space. Uh, whereas when you do know things about them, and in programming often you do, then that gives you the luxury of being able to use more concrete, more descriptive names.